Hello, welcome to Anita the Pedagogue channel. Today we continue with our literature lessons. We want to look at prose analysis or short story analysis of the story Home Sweet Home by Nigerian author Ken Sarowiwa. Let's begin our lessons today. Looking at our lesson objectives, we will talk about the author, the title, the setting of the story, the point of view, the plot analysis, characterization, literary devices, and we would also look at the themes and some likely examination questions. Now let's begin by looking at the author, Ken Sarowiwa, who is also known as Kenule Bison. Ken Sarowiwa was born on the 10th of October 1941. He was a Nigerian writer, television producer, and environmental activist. He was a member of the Ogoni people, an ethnic minority in Nigeria, whose homeland, Ogoni land, is in the Niger Delta, which has become targeted for crude oil extraction since the 1950s and which has suffered extreme environmental damage from decades of indiscriminate petroleum waste dumping. Sarawiwa led a non-violent campaign against environmental degradation of the land and waters of the Ogoni land by the operations of the multinational petroleum industry, especially the Royal Dutch Shell Company. He is also known as a critic of the Nigerian government for its allegedly reluctant behavior to enforce environmental regulations on the foreign petroleum companies operating in the area. At the peak of his non-violent campaign, he was tried by a special military tribunal for allegedly masterminding the gruesome murder of Ogoni chiefs at a pro-government meeting and hanged in 1995 by the military dictatorship of General Sani Abacha. His execution in November 10, 1995 provoked international outrage and resulted in Nigeria's suspension from the Commonwealth of Nations for over three years. Now that we know a little about our author, let's go on and look at the title home sweet home home sweet home as a title suggests that the story is about the joy a character or characters have for their home village or country we will learn the significance of this title at the very end of the story when the main character is in a troubled state and reflects on her hometown dukana my home my sweet home so that is where the title is picked from Home Sweet Home. Let's move on and look at the setting. So the story takes place in a village called Dukana, a fictional Nigerian town. So an oil bearing country and we see that Nigeria is an oil bearing country and there is more evidence that this is the fictional setting. So the time is post-colonial Nigeria. So there's a mention of some of the delicacies of Nigerians like pounded yam and hot pepper fish broth or pepper soup. And so we can say that this story is set um, in Dukana and Dukana probably is in Nigeria. Remember our author is also a Nigerian. Point of view. The story is written in the first person narrative point of view. The main character whose name is not mentioned narrates the story and she is a part of the story. She uses a lot of first person pronouns, I, we, throughout the story which enables us to identify the point of view. Let's look at the plot analysis. So the story begins with the introduction of the main character, a young lady who had just completed her tertiary education and was heading to her village. Dukana, where she would render her service as a teacher. In the bus that she commutes in, which is named Progress, she encounters the bus driver who, even though showed his love for his 
village was arrogant and tried to impress the narrator. He exhorted progress to move like a lady, a fine lady, an educated lady, typically referring to the narrator of the story. The story progresses to the rising action where the narrator recounts memories of Dukana. From the bumpy on tarred road that leads to the village, Sira, her best friend who dropped out of school, the buffoonery clowns of Dukana, Dozia, and Boom. Also, the respect and love for the outmoded culture and traditions and religions of her village, Dukana. The narrator is also quick to defend her village in spite of their lack of basic social amenities like schools, hospitals, pipe-borne water, and electricity. She condemns and calls out people who might condemn Dukana's backwardness, even in these modern times. She refers to them as being ill-informed and malicious. She rather boasted of a chief's palace that ensured law and order. The story progresses on to her arrival at Dukana, where her mother welcomes her and takes her home. The whole village comes to feast and celebrate her. Their pride was because she had gone out to the world to acquire the new knowledge, which she would share with them. However, they were not willing to wholeheartedly accept modernization. They continued their celebration with gin and snuff, drumming and dancing. The climax unfolds when Wally, the mother of Sira, the narrator's best friend, visits her and is unable to tell the whereabouts of her daughter. The primitive outmoded culture of Dukana is the reason for her friend's calamity. The narrator is dumbfounded after her mother reveals that Sira's birth twins prohibited her from living in the town of Dukana. The story descends to a very quick resolution where we see the narrator lost in her thoughts and imaginations of sadness and mourning of her home sweet home. Let's move on and look at the characterization. The narrator. The narrator is also the main character of the story. She is not addressed by name. She is, however, a young university graduate and a native of Dukana, a poor primitive village. She exhibits strong love for Dukana and its people. She is celebrated with pride by her people due to her success. She also chose to come back and help build her community by returning to take the position of a teacher. She appears to be brainwashed to follow the culture of her town without questions, especially considering her educational level and the fact that she had been educated in a city with modernity. She says to disagree was to be disloyal to communal wisdom. She also considers her mother's counsel as law. Let's move on and look at the next character, Sira. She is the best friend of the narrator. Her role in this story shows the oppression of women in Dukana. First, she drops out of school to give birth with the reason of her family being small. She gives birth to four children while pursuing the goal of increasing her family. In the end, she is driven out of her village due to a tradition of not allowing twin mothers live in the village, Dukana. Nobody knows her whereabouts and her twins, according to the narrator's mother, are dead. Boom is a slim, poor man seen in a tattered, dirty singlet. He sits at the market square and assists passengers with their luggage. Dozia called him to carry the narrator's bag from the market square to her home. Dozia. He is a physically challenged man who sits at the market square of Dukana. He is 
full of folly and is seen as the village clown due to his hilarious comments and his sense of humor. He cautioned the narrator that in imparting her knowledge to the young women, she should desist from teaching them to disobey their husbands as it could lead to the men beating them. Displays the desire to progress as the people of Dukana, but lacks the understanding of what real change would entail. Narrator's mother. She is the mother of the narrator. She is very proud her daughter has successfully completed her higher education and has come back to help her village. She plays a part in training the narrator not to be a critical thinker by telling her to just understand the customs and culture of Dukana and follow it religiously. She is a good mother who promoted her daughter's education, especially in a village like Dukana where women are oppressed. She is a matured woman who has aged within a short time. She is the mother of Sira. She is poor for it is said she could not pay serious fees. Wale, together with her husband, forced their daughter to procreate in order for their family not to die. Seeing how successful the narrator had become after completing her tertiary education, she felt sad for her daughter's plight. Let's go on and look at some literary devices. Personification. Personification is giving inanimate objects human attributes. Progress splattered lazily down the long, dirty road which stretched before us like the coated thang of an alien man. So here, we see that the bus is being given human attributes. We drove past sleepy little villages, hugged out of the forest, fondly embracing the earth and foliage. So, the villages are being given the human attribute to sleep and also fondly embracing the earth and, fo and foliage. Dukana slunk off noisily, the surrounding darkness swallowing them as they disappeared from Mama's house. So darkness is being given a human attribute to swallow. Let's move on and look at simile. Comparing two or more things using as like or than and the men and women pressed together on the wooden benches in the body of the lorry like fish hung on strings to dry so here how the men and women were together in the wooden benches of the car is being compared to how fishes are actually dried Progress splattered lazily down the long dirty road which stretched before us like the coated thang of an alien man. How it stretched is being compared to the coated thang of an alien man. He yelled at his brakes, he exalted progress to move like a lady, a fine lady, an educated lady. So, asking the bus, the way the bus moved to be like a lady is comparing the bus, the movements of the bus to a lady. She did not eat much and took her leave as soon as she had finished, slinking into the night like a cat. So, how she left the house is being compared to that of a cat. The world and its mad house, greater and more beautiful than the palace of kings and queens of other lands so here the the mud houses um, are being compared to that of the palace of kings and queens of other lands let's move on and look at hyperbole for you must understand that building a brick house in Dukana is the tax of a lifetime so hyperbole is extreme exaggeration so um, building a house usually is not a lifetime's work, so here it's been exaggerated. Onomatopia. Progress splattered lazily down the long dirty road, so splattered. So onomatopia is representing sound with words. 
it's so splattered. Don't talk when a freeborn is talking. He would gruefully shout at the conductor. So gruefully. Progress had screeched to a stop. Screeched. I sprang to my feet and fell into her outstretched arms. Sprang. Let's move on and look at some other literary devices. Metaphor. I should think the canal will be floating on a sea of wealth. So a metaphor is also comparing two things directly. So here, Dukana is being compared to a sea of wealth. Its driver was the son of the soil. So comparing the driver to the son of the soil, so directly. Mama's counsel was law, so comparing Mama's counsel to law. Rhetorical question. A question that doesn't demand an answer. And how could anyone disagree? Don't you see her mother hovering hawk like around her? You think she will allow anyone to touch a pin of her daughter's? And if anyone thought Buchanan was not progressive, what about the school they had established? Symbolism is using a word, an object. So represents an idea. So the bus progress is used as a symbol. It represents the people of Dukana and the progress they desire. However, the bus is nothing to write home about, in spite of it being the only bus and as well as the fact that it benefits its commuters. The bus doesn't give its passengers comforts like other modern buses which are even spacious and air-conditioned. Themes A theme is a central idea of a story. One theme of the story is there is no place like home. The saying there is no place like home explains the importance of home in people's lives. It is in a home we first feel loved, supported and appreciated. So Wiwa uses the narrator's joy and, proud and pride to be home to demonstrate that in spite of what the world offers, it will not be able to take the place of the home. You kind of lacked several social amenities and wanted progress, yet its people did not want to modify any of their customs to welcome the progress the village needed. The inhabitants nonetheless loved Yukana as their home and cherished their culture, which has become their stumbling block to success or modernity. The oppression of women has dire effects. The people of Dukana, even though were proud of the narrator's academic progress and success, as a woman, did not even support her friend Sira when she also gave birth to twins. They rather drove her out of the village due to their custom. Again, the buffonry Dozia suggests to the narrator to teach the young women to not teach the young women to disrespect their husbands as it will lead to wife beating and again it also shows how the people of the canal press women because beating is never the the option no matter what in addition the customs of Dukana led Wale to force her only daughter to procreate for the continuity of her family which in the long run destroyed the life of Sira, because if not because of societal pressure, why would Wale have forced Sira to give birth? Because their family was a small family. Again, the people of Dukana have pride and arrogance in upholding their customs and culture, but their backwardness is due to their inability to make changes to their culture and make their lives better and also support women in Dukana. Progress comes with change. The desire of the people of Dukana is evident in the name of their bus, Progress. They welcome the narrator and are, and are excited she will be imparting new knowledge in the village. But are they willing to make the changes to their culture and lifestyle? The pride and arrogance of Buchanan towards um, 
their culture is the cause of their underdevelopment. Service to one's community is another theme of the story. The theme is evident in the narrator's joy of returning home to serve her community as a young graduate teacher. The people of Dukana on the other side are full of pride as they welcome her back to the community. Let's look at some likely examination questions. Describe three characters from the story. Mention and explain two themes of the story. What are some of the characteristics of the bus driver? In your opinion, what does Dukana need to, to be able to be progressive? What had happened to Syria while the narrator was away? What role do Dozia and Boom play in the story? Identify any five literary devices in the story. Progress blotted lazily down the long dirty road which stretched before us like the coated tank of an alien man. What is progress according to this extract? Progress flattered lazily is an example of what figure of speech or literary device. A figure of speech used in like the coated tank of an alien man is so these are some likely examination questions. Let's quickly do a recap. We've looked at the title, Home Sweet Home, the setting of the story, the plot analysis, the point of view, characterization, some literary devices, the themes, and some likely examination questions. I hope this lesson was useful to you. Put in your comments and questions and I'll respond to you. Do like and share and also subscribe to this channel. Until I come your way again, keep learning and be the best version of yourself.